few topics seem to generate more confusion among divers and instructors than that of respiratory minute volume, better known as RMV, and surface air consumption rate, commonly referred to as SAC rate. Here are some things that I've had technical diving instructor candidates tell me when I ask them to explain the difference between the two. Well, one is metric and the other is imperial. You measure SAC in PSI and RMV in cubic feet. RMV is for CCR diving. SAC rate is for open circuit. And then there's my favorite answer because it's the most common and the most honest. It's, I don't know, every time I ask someone to explain it, I hear something different. It doesn't help that in many tech diving courses, any discussion of RMV and SAC rate is coupled with a lot of complex math. In reality, the underlying concepts are fairly simple. A friend of mine, former dive training senior editor, Dr. Alex Brilsky, is fond of saying, good instructors don't make simple things complex. They make complex things simple. Let's see if we can do just that. Respiratory minute volume, or RMV, is exactly what the name implies. The volume of gas in either liters or cubic feet that moves into or out of your lungs over the course of a minute. Note that it doesn't matter whether you use metric or imperial units of measure. So just go ahead and use the system that you're most comfortable with. Open circuit and CCR divers use RMV for very different purposes. For open circuit divers, RMV is a way of projecting gas consumption at depth. CCR divers, on the other hand, don't consume gas the way open circuit divers do. They use RMV chiefly for projecting scrubber canister life. The lower the RMV, the less carbon dioxide passes through the scrubber material and the longer it will last. In this video, we're going to focus on how RMV affects open circuit divers. It's possible for open circuit divers to measure RMV in bars or PSI, but that's only useful if, like many sport divers, you consistently used just a single size cylinder, like an 11 liter aluminum 80. As cave and technical divers, we use a wide variety of cylinders. Therefore, it's important for us to be able to project RMV in terms of volume so that we can apply it to any size cylinder we may happen to be using. The thing about RMV is that it varies with depth. For example, at a depth of four atmospheres, that's 30 meters or just under 100 feet, our RMV will be twice what it would be at a depth of two atmospheres or 10 meters, 33 feet. That's just Boyle's law in action. In order to make RMV usable, we need to convert it into something else. And that's where surface air consumption, or SAC rate, comes into play. SAC rate is nothing more than RMV adjusted for ambient pressure at sea level. In other words, if your RMV at a depth of four atmospheres is eight liters per minute, it means your SAC rate is one fourth of that, or two liters per minute. Determining your personal SAC rates isn't difficult but you will need to invest a little time doing it. Basically, you are going to need to do a number of gas consumption runs. The reason you do several of these is that your gas consumption will vary each time you do one, and you need to be able to average them to come up with a more accurate figure. 
A typical gas consumption run consists of swimming or resting at a constant depth for a fixed period of time. Five minutes or more is common. If you use, say, 35 bars or 500 PSI over a period of five minutes, your RMV at depth would be one-fifth of that. That works out to seven bars or 100 PSI per minute. The next step is to convert RMV to an equivalent surface air consumption rate by dividing it by the depth of your run in atmospheres absolute. So again, if you did your gas consumption run at a depth of 10 meters or 33 feet, your sac rate would be half of what it was at depth. The final step is to convert these values from pressure to volume by factoring the size and working pressure of whatever cylinder you were breathing from. Okay, there is a lot of math here, but don't worry. We're going to make it easy on you. In the accompanying article, you'll find links to metric and imperial versions of our SAC rate calculator spreadsheets. All you have to do with these spreadsheets is plug in your starting and ending pressures, the depth and time of your gas consumption run, and the working pressure and rated capacity of the cylinder you were breathing from. Just remember to multiply the rated volume by two if using doubles. Along with the calculator portion of each spreadsheet, there is a recording area to list the results from multiple consumption runs. The spreadsheet then gives you a running average that increases the accuracy the more runs you do. The recording area also has separate columns so that you can record results for both working and resting portions of a dive. Let's face it, your RMV is going to be a lot higher when you are fighting against a current than it will be when you are hanging off a line doing deco. You need both values. The more you can refine your resting and working sac rate values by making multiple gas consumption runs, the more valuable the results will be in real-world dive planning. And again, the process for doing so isn't that complicated. To start, you will need to know, or at least be able to estimate, the average depth of an upcoming dive. Next, convert this depth to atmospheres absolute, or ATA. Now, multiply your sac rate by your depth in ATA, and again, by the number of minutes you plan to remain at this depth. This will give you a projected volume in liters or cubic feet. The final step will be to factor in the size of your cylinders and convert this value to a specific number of bars or PSI. Cave and technical dives are almost always multi-level dives. This means that, depending on the complexity of the dive, you may need to do a gas use projection for each deco stop and possibly for each phase of your time on the bottom if it will be at differing depths. But don't worry. We have a spreadsheet for that too, but that's a topic for another video and another blog article. If you didn't already have a good understanding of RMV and SAC rate at the beginning of this video, you should have a better understanding now. Let's recap by busting some of the myths we identified at the beginning of the video. You can measure both RMV and SAC using either metric or imperial values. The choice is entirely up to you. Although you initially use either bars or PSI when measuring RMV, the results are only useful if you convert them from pressure to volume. SAC rate is nothing more than RMV adjusted for ambient pressure at sea level. CCR divers use RMV too but in a way that is very different from what open circuit divers do. On a final note, if you teach cave or technical diving, remember that there's no need to make this complicated. Keep it simple. You'll increase your students' understanding and as a result, make them safer.